There are four different search methods on the disk to find the information you are looking for. You can look up an entry alphabetically by using the A to Z index. Search by date using the timeline. Locate an invention by the map. Search through a specific topic or sit back and watch the nine documentaries. To return to previous screens, use the back option. And to write down any notes, use the notepad. When you have finished using the encyclopedia, click on the on-off switch.
the ancient process of casting is still used to turn ordinary metal into useful objects. A furnace is heated to a very high temperature. The metal is placed in a heat-resistant container above the heat source. Sometimes more than one type of metal might be melted to form an alloy. The metal turns to liquid and is poured into a mould. The metal cools and hardens, making its new shape permanent.
Transistors are able to control electrical current either through amplification or by acting as a switch. They can be divided into three parts, the emitter, the base and the collector. They also contain two types of semiconductor which can be labelled positive and negative. If a signal at the base is positive, the flow of electrons from the emitter to collector is released and the transistor is on. If a signal at the base is negative, the flow of electrons from the emitter to collector is blocked and the transistor is off. Transistors are useful to the electronics industry because they can easily be miniaturized.
Nuclear power is produced by the action of nuclear fission. This takes place when the nucleus of an atom of uranium or plutonium is bombarded by free neutrons. The nucleus splits, releasing other neutrons. These then split other nuclei, resulting in a chain reaction. Large amounts of nuclear power can be generated in a nuclear reactor. Energy emitted by the uranium or plutonium fuel rods is used to heat surrounding water. This in turn produces steam, which can be harnessed to power a steam generator. The nuclear energy is kept under control by special rods placed between the fuel rods. These are able to absorb free neutrons and limit the amount of nuclear fission that can take place. Gothic arches were very tall and pointed. Pressure on an arch is exerted outwards and downwards. As an arch becomes taller, the outward pressure becomes greater. 
Gothic architects added stone buttresses to direct extra pressure downwards and stop the arch from collapsing. Large churches and cathedrals needed side aisles. These also required stone buttresses for support. The central arch could then be supported by stone pinnacles to direct the pressure downwards. Communication was always vital if the human race was going to survive and prosper. Without language, there was no society, no civilization, no way of passing on new ideas, new experiences, new learning. Written forms of communication provided a link with the future, which was more reliable than oral transmission. What could be written down could seemingly last forever. Art developed too, and reflected the spirit of a culture, its stories, its myths, the way it saw the world. Now the world seems to have changed beyond recognition. The speed and quantity of information that flies around the planet each day is awesome. But perhaps some of the messages are still the same as they were many thousands of years ago. Little is known about the early developments of human communication. Homo erectus, the first human to walk upright, may have developed a very simple form of language. It seems more likely, though, that it was Neanderthal man, who first appeared around 300,000 BC, that made the early breakthroughs into speech. There are also carvings, which some experts believe were made by them. Before Homo erectus and the Neanderthals died out, around 35,000 BC, a new and more advanced form of human had appeared. Homo sapiens, modern humans, first existed close to 90,000 years ago. Their first drawings seem to have been made around 30,000 years ago. These pictures developed hunting themes and more symbolic and possibly religious imagery as time passed. While forms of speech developed over the next few thousand years, it wasn't until around 3000 BC that any form of writing was first invented. The earliest written language was developed by the Sumerian civilization. It was made up of pictographs, pictures which represented words, and was drawn onto soft clay tablets. Around 1800 BC, examples of a kind of writing called cuneiform started to appear in Babylonia and Mesopotamia. Cuneiform was one of the earliest written languages. It was made up of different combinations of impressions pressed into clay by a reed pen. The search for a more portable writing surface led the Egyptians to experiment with a reed called papyrus. Once they had discovered how to make flat sheets from it, they found it more successful and longer lasting than animal skins. Pens were also made from sharpened reeds and ink was made from mixing soot with plant resin and water. The invention of writing made it possible for civilizations to manage themselves. People could keep records of crops, where they had come from and how they were distributed. Gradually, information about many subjects could be transferred between citizens. The first great empires started to grow up around 1000 BC. Civilizations such as ancient Greece and Rome were well organized. They had armies, craft workers and well-developed religions. Written communication was very important to keep the people linked as a social unit. Various alphabets appeared around this time as a means of expressing a language in a written form. The Phoenicians, who lived on the Syrian coast, developed one of the earliest, and it was adapted by both the Greeks and the Israelites. 
It consisted of 22 consonants. Readers had to guess the vowel sounds. Writing was not the only form of expression for the more advanced civilizations. All the great empires developed artistic skills and crafts to communicate the way they saw the world around them and to reflect the beauty and mystery of life itself. Styles and patterns varied tremendously from country to country, but many cultures had learned to express their creativity with flair and skill. After the fall of the Roman Empire in the 5th century AD, writing and art fell under the control of the monasteries, while ordinary people often lacked any of these basic skills. In Western Europe, this period is known as the Dark Ages. In other parts of the world, though, important discoveries were being made. In India, the decimal system of numbers was evolved, along with algebra. In China, the first form of printing, using movable type, was invented. And in the Muslim world, an atlas of Islam was created, which included a map of the known world. The Dark Ages faded away in the early 14th century. They gave way to the European Renaissance. This period was perhaps the greatest flowering of artistic creativity and scientific endeavour that the world has ever witnessed. One person still stands out as the perfect example of Renaissance man, Leonardo da Vinci. He combined great artistic ability with a genius for invention and has been an inspiration to artists and scientists ever since. One of the long-term effects of the Renaissance was a gradual move towards the mechanization of many processes. The development of the printing press and the publishing of early books in the 15th century was the beginning of a rapid growth in the technology of communication. Books like the Bible could now be produced cheaply and in large quantities. This made them available to more and more people. The mass transmission of ideas was on its way spreading quickly from country to country. The new technology meant that newspapers appeared for the first time. These were started in Antwerp in Belgium in 1600. It took about another hundred years before the first daily newspaper was made available. It was called the Daily Courant and was published in England in 1702. The 18th century saw important developments in the delivery of more personal information. Mail coaches started their important role in the carriage of letters and parcels around the country. They were to be the main means of transport for the postal service until the trains took over in the 1830s. A few years later, in 1840, the penny black stamp revolutionised the way postage was paid for. Until the stamp appeared, it had been the person who received post who had to pay for it. The 19th century was a time of great innovation in producing and reproducing language. The typewriter developed from a very clumsy and difficult machine to operate into a useful tool for creating legible writing. The first mechanical printing machine, which appeared in 1811, greatly increased the sales potential of the publishing trade. The recording of sound, in particular the human voice, was the greatest desire of some of the 19th century's inventors. The first sound recording was achieved in 1856. The phonograph was then developed, soon followed by the gramophone, with its distinctive horn to amplify the sound. This was such a popular invention that it was not superseded until well into the 20th century. Perhaps the biggest breakthrough of the 19th century was Alexander Graham Bell's invention of the telephone, in 1876. Even now, well over a hundred years later, we are still finding new applications for telecommunications. The dream of wireless or radio communication was first realized by the Italian Marconi in the late 1890s. In 1898, a radio message was successfully sent across the English Channel. Progress in the visual media was also very rapid in the second half of the 19th century. With the discovery that silver salts go black when exposed to light, the science of photography was underway. For hundreds of years, painters had worked in a camera obscura, literally a dark room, in which images from outside were directed and focused onto the painter's canvas so that they could paint over the live image. 
The modern camera is basically a small version of this dark room, in which the image from in front of the lens is focused onto the light-sensitive film inside the camera. The invention of photography made another great art form possible, cinema. By 1895, the French Lumiere brothers had created the first film, a series of images on a reel of celluloid tape. Just like today's feature films, this was transported past the lens using a row of perforations down each side of the film. As each image is pulled past the lens, it stops momentarily before it is replaced by the next image. The continuous change of static photographic images magically gives the appearance of movement. The early 20th century saw many of the major inventions of the 19th century refined and developed. The telephone, the telegraph service and the radio were all made available to increasing numbers of people. The radio soon played a key role in the cultural life of many countries. Marconi, the man who had developed radio, also played a key role in the development of broadcast television. With radio and television, the potential for new forms of public entertainment was soon realised and exploited. Another invention which gave us new entertainment was the tape recorder. This greatly improved the recording quality of music and speech and initiated new ways of bringing sound to the public, such as radio journalism. Like the tape recorder, many inventions that have changed the 20th century have used electronics. They have also been linked to the storage and transmission of information. Many people say we have moved from an industrial age to an information age. The single invention that has made this fully possible is the computer. The first modern computer was built in the 1940s and weighed 30 tons. In the 1950s, scientists learned to store computer information on magnetic tape, just like the tape recorder. The microchip was developed and led to smaller and increasingly powerful computers. By the 1960s, computers were involved in everything from space travel to banking. The idea that everybody would one day own a computer would have been unbelievable only 20 years ago. But two companies, first Apple and then IBM, changed the face of the world with their different brands of personal computer. Suddenly, ordinary people could afford to do new things, create newspapers, play games, publish books, paint pictures, design cars and buildings, access information on the internet, control machines. The list is as long as our imagination.